Before you apologize, Mr. Mr. Dara. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mr. Dabele. Yes, you, you wanted before before you do that mr mulati thank you yes mr devil What is happening? What is happening, Mr. Nell? The libraries are closed where we buy papers, the printing, the facilities are closed. It is not very easy to have resources out there. But you, you approach this court on an urgent basis. I would have thought you are the ones who should have seen to it that everything is before us. Uh, as, as, as per the directives of the court. Okay. Mr. Mr. Taylor, what, what do you say to that? Solely is that you'll have, Mr. Taylor, is for an additional set of uh, heads, supplementary, in the event that you, you think there are some issues which you would strongly want to uh, have a second bite in relation to. Uh, that's, that's the only thing that we can say. I 
insert the copy of this application? The intervention application? Yes, Mr. Mlad. So, as I understand it, you are only intervening in relation to prorogation. In relation to the prorogation. Not, not uh, the, in relation to the other reliefs other that, that, that the applicants are pursuing. Other reliefs that are pursued will be dealt with by their main applicants. Yeah. And for purposes of your argument, your papers would only be considered insofar as they revolve around prorogation. That is the affidavits. Yeah. And that essentially the case is that um, um, as against the, uh, your co-applicants, your case is that the parliament should have been consulted. That, that is true. Because uh, when we look into the uh, of motion, paragraph 28, we talk about uh, the, the declaration of the prime minister's uh, act to prorogue. It 
being challenged only the amongst other many other factors that there was no endorsement of the executive. Instead of saying executive for our purposes, we are going to say parliament, not the executive. Okay. That is the end of the problem. Yes. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Putting, are you still on the on the housekeeping matters? Or? Well, thank you, my lord. Uh, I I assumed that we we done with the housekeeping. With it? I I assumed we are done with the housekeeping uh, issue, and uh, I I was proposing how we. No, no, what I want to find out before you say anything from council uh, is uh, the way forward. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I realize that there are some preliminary issues raised by the respondents. That's correct. And I just wanted to find out from uh, Mr. Taylor. Uh, how should we proceed? Uh, should we deal with the issues holistically or you'd want to press your, the disposal of preliminary matters first? I, I, I would have loved to insist on the point in the middle, but unfortunately the devil will not uh, save this court's time yes. maximum. So I prefer that if it pleases the court, we we'll deal with the uh, points eliminated together with the merits. Together with the merits. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Putin. Thank you, my lord. <clears throat> my lord, to, for our, our side, as applicants, we have filed two heads instead of the legal argument. Uh, the, uh, the yeah, initial argument filed on behalf of the Pacific National Party and Dr. Mabai. I wish to start addressing the court on them. I just need to be certain that their lordships and my lady are in possession of the right treatment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have them. As a public. Yes. My lord. Uh, with the permission of this one of court, may we focus on page 60? No, Mr. Puti, you cannot start now. The first applicant has to start. You are for the second and third, isn't it? That is true, my lord. What about the first applicant? We should start with the first applicant. We should start with the first applicant. Yeah, true, then we'll come here yeah, sequentially. You cannot be right that you being number two and three, you should... Uh, Run the race first. Yeah. Let, let the first runner run. No, but Miss Mr. Devil, it can't be right. Each of you is representing a party before court. You are not a team. It's not as if you are, you are th the, the three of you are representing one applicant here. Because even when the issues are raised on preliminary matters, you'll see that actually some of the issues raised go directly to the capacity of some of your colleagues or clients to, to litigate before court. So it cannot be right and correct that you should say because we are all applicants will actually appoint anyone, any one of us to argue the case. It cannot, perhaps, it, it cannot be right. Or perhaps maybe you should give us the reason why you had intended that Mr. Leputin should be given if it is valid. Will address the following issues 
And I will address one of these issues. This is how we intended to handle the matter. But, but in that case, Mr. Ndebele, there's no harm in Mr. you starting. You do your bit, Mr. Rasquai will do his bit, Mr. Putin will do his bit. Not the other way around that council for the other parties should start first. In fact, the Ministry of Justice is saying that tempts me to submit that if in fact they have split up their clients, who is one client in fact, only one of them should, should address the call. Because if they are saying then they are, they are, they are, they are dealing with the matter as a team, they are representing them as a commonality, as a common factor, then I will submit that then one of them should address the call. You do not have to suffer, you know, to, to, to wait until every one of them has said something. When it is clear that in the circumstances, they are in that presenting all this plan in common. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mr. In your position, my Lord, and my lady, I think with respect, we are making a mountain out of a mountain. The, the real issue depends on the sequence of people who have to advise. And the situation uh, as it stands, we have the same cause of action, different plans, and there's absolutely nothing legally comprehensible or untoward if we agree that since we have a common purpose in the, in the case at hand, we have organized ourselves in such a way that so and so will address this issue, the other will address this issue. Now I'll make a practical example, Your Worship. I have been given the mandate uh, by my colleagues after our deliberations that I will address the issues which touch on the uh, preliminary points of law and some other relief which has to do with the validity or otherwise of the provision. But the sequence in my humble submission does not lie in who has to address the court first. The sequence lies in the subject that has to be canvassed first. No, but that's your convenience, Mr. Rasqua. You are, you are raising issues of convenience. Precisely. Yeah. You cannot address local standard in relation to a client which is not yours, for example. If there are primary objections, you cannot say because you are a team, I'm going to argue the case of someone who's not my client. That's not how you do things. That Remember, is. even when it comes to costs, in the event, for example, that there might be a need for punitive costs, how, how are you going to handle that? Well, Would you have done justice to, the, to a client who is not yours, merely because as counsel you decided that, no, we are going to rearrange ourselves in this way? Because my, the practice has not been what you are suggesting. It's my first experience that council who represent different uh, parties will stand before court and say, okay, we have delegated authority to our colleagues to address this matter. Well, There's a good reason why these applicants are as they are. Well, Your brief is not the brief of Mr. Debel and vice versa. Or Mr. Liputi. So you cannot argue a brief which is not yours. That That's said. simply the law. You see. So it's not a question of making a, you know, a mountain out of a molehill. The law is very clear that thou shalt not argue a case which is not yours. But as Mr. Stele perhaps uh, uh, suggests, which you don't seem to be buying, is that if you are minded then to take that approach, not, not all of you can address us. At, 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 at most, only two of you, because I'll take it that one is lead counsel, the other is a junior. Well, that be, That's not a problem if you say, I'm the lead counsel, so and so is a junior. Not, not the three of you, it cannot be the three of you. When it is the three of you, each one has to argue his own case. That I accept, Your Worship, but the challenge is that each and every one of us, 
are representing different lines over the same subject matter. And, and the convenience that we contemplated was also to the advantage of the court to the extent that each and every, if each and every one of us has to address the court independently, it means there's a high likelihood of repetition. No, no, you'll, so, you'll listen to the debate with the first counsel. And if you think, well, there's no need now to go that route. You are not. You are going to abandon that debate because you'll take the cue from the debates. Need I address the court on this issue or press it? What's the point? Or if you think there's a different angle, you can you can then address the court on that angle. But the the the, the, the approach is simply this: whoever addresses, if you say you are fighting from the same corner. Whoever addresses should deal with the issues. You can only say so and so is going to follow. Well, there's lead counsel, there's a counsel who's going to follow. Not the three of you. It can be very, very unwieldy. Because there are some matters which you are not going to be able to answer if we ask questions. You'll be saying, well, I'll defer to my colleague. He'll address them at the relevant time. Whereas the court wants answers now. I want an answer now. I ask you a question. You'll be saying, well, my colleague will address it in due course. I don't want that. I want us to debate issues, finalize, and proceed to another issue, not to be postponing argument on issues. But if you say so-and-so is the lead counsel, then he'll have, the lead counsel will have to answer all relevant questions on the issue raised at the particular point in time. That, that I appreciate. Yeah. May I, may I propose a five minute agenda so that we can organize ourselves? Because the, the way I saw it, or the way I understand it, is that the subject matter of the cause of action is the same, but there are certain features which are peculiar to each and every client. For example, my clients are members of Senate and, and members of the National Assembly, while the rest of the Africans are, are, are political parties. Do we have they your are, heads? Do you have your heads, Mr. Ras? Yeah, then why don't you talk to your heads? We have the heads of the other parties. They'll talk to their heads. Yes. Because if you had, if you are minded to do what you have done, you should have just have submitted one pair of heads. Now we are going, we, 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 we will have to read all these heads. And we can only conveniently deal with them if a particular council addresses us. There are certain questions that I'm going to ask you, yes. which I may not necessarily ask the other council, and, and vice versa. Yes. The, the your case, for example, if you say you are representing uh, uh, members of parliament yes. in both chambers, yes. you see, you are not concerned with the political parties, isn't it? Precisely. Yeah, then, then the, 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 the legal issues that arise are different from legal issues relating to political parties and vice versa. On locals, for example, I accept your question. What? Well, it's not important, but what is important... Is so what do you want an adjournment? What do you want to do with an adjournment of five well, minutes? So that we organize ourselves. What is disorganized now? Because we have heads. I don't understand maybe. What, what is disorganized? We have your heads. You can just stand up and say, I'll be addressing the following issues because my learned friend has already covered a certain ground. The, the heads of the first, uh, the ABC, and the senators and members of the National Assembly have been prepared jointly. Uh, if his lordship would be minded, their lordships and my lady would be minded. How are you going to tax the costs? Well, if, 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 if you do these things jointly, when it comes to taxation of costs, how are you going to tax the costs? Remember, even the time taken by parties before us, when it comes to costs, we might have considered the time that they took. So this thing is more complicated than you are putting it. That I accept. Yes. The more the reason I humbly question the but for what purpose? For purpose? I have to know what, what is it that you want to achieve with this adjournment? Because you have heard what we are proposing. Yes. Do, do you take what Mr. Taylor is suggesting or you, you don't go with it? That there should be lead counsel, then there's counsel who's going to follow. Yes, you don't accept it, you don't if you don't accept it, then each party should address us. Yes. Because I'm, we'll be asking questions 
and they'll, they'll have a bearing on costs. And you have heads before us. I don't understand what the problem is. These heads even came late. Why, why do you want us to adjourn? Why don't you address your point? Even if it overlaps, it's not a problem. The first applicant should start and address us. If he's not prepared to address us, then I don't see any reason why we should even give him an adjournment. Because the point you are making is that we are not prepared to address you. No, that, that's not the point. No, but that's why you want an adjournment, because you are not prepared. Because if you are prepared, you'd be saying, I'm starting now. The, that has to do with, the adjournment has to do with the logistics of how we are going to go. No, Mr. Mr. Rasquai, that's a matter for council, not for the court. That's the court. Yes. Yeah. Now you want the court to adjourn at the convenience of council. You are there sitting at the bar. Why don't you whisper to each other that, no, you start? I will well, take it any further. Yes, we don't need an adjournment. Yes. Yes, Mr. Ndebek. Yes. And I'll stop there. Hello. <clears throat> His Lordship Sakwani J and J and Chairman In the case of Matibet uh, Mukoti versus and others, that's a speaker of National Assembly. At page 14 of the judgment, the court was confronted with a similar issue of whether political parties do have local standing in matters such as this. And this is what the court said. And I quote paragraph 20. A few heads. It's it appears in the judgment. Okay. I'm quoting the judgment, my lord. Okay. And um, it appears at page 22, paragraph 5.21 of our text. Yeah. The court said <clears throat> political parties and coalitions are formal institutions recognized and protected by the Constitution. We play a key role in the appointment and removal of the Prime Minister in terms of Section 834 c 5 b The numerical strength is key in the appointment of the leader of the position. We hold seats in terms of Section 57-1C Roman figure two as amended and have local standing to challenge membership of parliament in terms of section 69 of the constitution as amended, read right with section 126, 3 and 4 of yeah. the National Assembly Electoral Act of 2011. Mm. Thus, political parties are not just vehicles of ele ele electioneering and convey a belt to Parliament. They are legal persona with interest and responsibilities in the constitutional and statutory scheme of things. Lord, you would agree with me that 
No, we, we don't have to agree with council, Mr. Mr. Yeah, you submit. You don't. You don't solicit our agreement. Yeah. You don't agree with me before I submit. I'm saying so because it's common cause. That any prorogation or any form of postponement of parliamentary business would affect would affect the interest of all political parties represented in Parliament. will not only affect those political parties, it will affect those individual members who have acquired seats as a result of being members of the political party. That is to say, members of parliament, and political parties would be affected by prorogation of parliament. And that by itself about, is a sufficient interest that deserves constitutional protection. And that deserves judicial protection by this honorable court if they are affected. Well, I will take it further to refer this to the court of the case of we call it Miller case. What, Mr. Is it in the heads? It is in the heads. Which, which page? Quoted in by the respondents. It has been quoted by both. Yeah, give us the citation. The citation is. The, the, the. Let me refer to page paragraph sixty-five, page twenty-six of respondents here. Paragraph. Yes, proceed. Yes, Miss Neville. Is it Miller? Yes. That's Miller, my lord. Okay. I would prefer to call it the Miller case. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Miller. Paragraph 67, is it? Yeah, paragraph 67, I'll respond to it. Yeah. Paragraph yes. 65, yes. Is it 65 or 67? That's 65. Now. Okay. Yes. yes. I want to refer to paragraph 13 in that judgment, page 12 down. Yes. This is what the court said in that paragraph, particularly the last sentence. The last sentence. Yeah. In that paragraph. It says that situation does, however, place the Prime Minister the on the Prime Minister a constitutional responsibility. As a person with power to do so. Very important. 
is to help with God to all relevant interests, including the interests of the power. That is to say, when the Prime Minister decides to provoke the power, he must consider the interests, he must consider all relevant interests and the interests of the parliament. We submit that the interests of members of parliament and political parties who are members in that parliament must be considered when prorogation decision is taken. And if they are not, then they have the right to come before this one of the court to seek the relief. So your complaint is that the the interest of the party in parliament was not considered? As, 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 as I, I read the papers, uh, I'm not now sure because I, I don't know whose case it is. There's a reliance on a coalition agreement by, by, three, by four parties. Yeah. Does it have anything to do with the, what you call the legal obligation of the Prime Minister to consider the interests of your client in Parliament? come to that aspect, my Lord, because we have, the, the APC has interest in this matter as a party in parliament. That is number one. Yeah, in other words, you are not, yes, number two, sorry. Number two, it has interest in this matter as a member or as a part of coalition. And we will address the issue of coalition. So, for the time being, you are only confining yourself to Parliamentary interests. I was only dealing with the issue of the issue of local standing of the ABC in this matter. In Parliament. In Parliament. Not outside Parliament. Not outside Parliament. Okay. Yes. And to wrap up that issue of local standing, I would say yes. The ABC has local standing in this matter. Now, to take it further, it is common cause that... But, but Mr. Ndebele, if, if you are saying the party has to be consulted at parliamentary level, that would mean uh, members of the party in parliament. It is than that. No, 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 I'm saying in parliament. I know you are going to argue extra parliamentary consultation. But I'm saying as far as intra-parliamentary consultation is concerned, in effect, what your submission boils to is that members, MPs of ABC should have been consulted. That is so, my Lord. Okay. Because they are members of the parliament. Now, to take it further, my Lord, as we have cited in the Hodi case, yes. Political parties, as his lordships are funny, might be pointed out, they are not just vehicles for electioneering and obeying belts of the parliament. They are recognized institutions under the constitution, and they have rights which are enforceable before this one is a local. But to take it further, my God, remember, <coughs> this is a representative democracy. Whereby majority of the people have elected the ABC. ABC as a party 
has about 53 members in parliament. ABC has a quantum representing people. It represents almost 250,000 people. It has 53 members in parliament, including the prime minister. But those MPs in parliament, Ms. Ndebel, aren't they representing the whole nation? I mean, after elections, uh, are, they, are we supposed to say, okay, look at the party colors in parliament? Because my understanding of the law is that the party colors are irrelevant in parliament. They are not, my lord. Because they are, it is their numbers that is considered for purposes of establishing the government. But if you say that, it would mean that an MP would stand up and say, well, I, I object or oppose a certain project because it's being directed to benefit a constituency from which we don't have a, an MP. Uh, isn't that the logical they conclusion to they say? Always, they always raise such issues. No, no, but I'm saying would that be proper? Those are people. They're not justiciable issues, my Lord. No, no, I'm saying those are people's representatives assembling there. Yes. When things are done in respect of a constituency, it's irrelevant which party won the constituency, isn't it? In other words, the majority party can say, well, we are going to direct or divert resources to the following constituencies which we won, in those constituencies which we haven't won, since we don't have a mandate, we are not obligated to serve them. That's why I'm saying, aren't they, aren't they a collective in parliament? Albeit, of course, we know the genesis of how they came into parliament is along party political lines, but once they are there, isn't it the law that, uh, or isn't it the correct approach to say, well, Every MP in that house is obligated from the perspective of public or national interest to, to serve the constituency without any partisan uh, uh, interest. That, 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 that is true. Uh, that, that, is, that, that is true position. But for purposes of submission, my Lord, the interest of the ABC shall always remain Vested in those individuals who represent it. No, that I understand, but I, 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 I was merely concerned with the latter point that you are making. Yes. That at the, at the end of the day, the consultation that you say the Prime Minister should have done with the party in Parliament is a consultation to be done with the caucus of the party. In other words, he's a, he's a prime minister. Then he says, well, I'm going to convene a caucus of ABC in parliament and consult it. Is that what you are saying? Or shouldn't the prime minister have actually consulted a collective in parliament, irrespective of its political colors? Anyway, my Lord, uh, I'm dealing with... No, no, I'm saying, but can you answer that? Because I want your assistance. I want to understand your argument, Mr. Ndebel. I'm, I'm saying the interest of... Both, both are important consultations, my Lord. They are important consultations. But I'm saying as far as the caucuses are concerned, are you saying the Prime Minister, in his capacity as the Prime Minister, not as a leader of the party, because as a leader of the party, I understand he'll be saying I'm consulting with my caucus. But as a, if he's a Prime Minister wearing that ahead, can you afford to say, well, I'm only going to consult my party? But not, you cannot divorce him from being a leader of the party. So if I cannot divorce him, it means when he was proroguing parliament, he was doing that as a leader of the party. <laughs> no, both. Sorry? Both. No, but the constitution doesn't talk about a leader of the party. Prorogation shall be done by the Prime Minister. And, he, and his colors are irrelevant as far as that office is concerned. In, a, in other words, he's a, he's a Prime Minister of the whole country. He's not the Prime Minister of a certain party. Well, Lord, that one is 
is, is understandable. But now I'm dealing with the interest of ABC. That's why I'm saying, and is it, are you saying the interest of the ABC caucus in parliament? Should I, should, should I describe it this way? No, no, my Lord. Why not? No, because no, the ABC, no. the ABC in parliament is a caucus. It's not the political no. party per se. It's, it's, it's a caucus in parliament. My Lord. If it is the prime minister, but, it, but of course as a leader, I understand. The party would be saying, of course, you are a member, you are our leader. You should have uh, briefed us. You did not do that. That was wrong. And then you'd hold him accountable in accordance with the party constitution. But as far as the national constitution is concerned, it knows no colors, isn't it? So if he's a prime minister and he has to consult, he should consult the whole collective. I agree with that. But okay. Is a party. Is a party. Yeah, okay. And now I'm saying the interests of this party are represented by that caucus in Parliament. And what is its interest in prorogation? They because are, you say you you the say the that's what I was saying. Yes. That the only interest that is cognizable constitutionally is because they are members of Parliament. Yeah. Now, we, we, we take it further, my Lord, to see. The ABC, let me repeat what I said. Mm. I said, my Lord, the ABC is, has been elected by more than 250,000 people. Yes. It is represented in Parliament by at least 53 parliamentarians, including the Prime Minister himself. Yes. The ABC is a member or is part of coalition yes. government. Yes. It has signed a coalition agreement. Mm. Wherein wherein consultation in every decision is mandatory. Consultation of a coalition with coalition partners. Yes. But here, you are not arguing for coalition partners, you are arguing for ABC. ABC can, can you just, sorry? ABC is part of that coalition. But the coalition is not before court, Ms. Ndebe. It is the party which is before, it's not the coalition. Coalition partner is before court, there's no need to bring coalition before court. Is, is, is the coalition complaining? The coalition is complaining. As which party? The ABC. No, no, by a party I mean which applicant? The ABC is complaining. BNP is complaining. And RCL, its leader, attached the nominality. <laughs> is RCL complaining? It is. A member of RCL. Yeah, but not the party. Yes. Not the party. Yeah, so RCL is not complaining. <laughs> not yes. But where I am is... Is, is... is AD complaining? We complain about this. Yeah, it's not... So it's not a coalition. That's what I'm saying. You, members, you should, members of the coalition. Yeah, not the coalition. Yes, There's a difference between a coalition... coalition Sorry? I did not say coalition is I thought you said so. No, no, no. Maybe I misheard you. Yes. Members of coalition. Ah, before court. Ah, before court. That I understand. That I understand. Yes. And ABC, as a member of that coalition, complains that the coalition was never consulted about. About, pro about prorogation. About prorogation. Yeah. Yes. Therefore, they also have the question. On the basis of that coalition to come before this honorable court. But if you read the constitution, the constitution says it's the prime minister who has to tender advice. And he doesn't say to us, before he advises his majesty, he should have consulted the following. Lord, I will deal That's a contract between 
the coalition partners. But as far as the constitution is concerned, it doesn't say the prime minister is obligated to consult. We, we will deal with that issue. Well, for political convenience, that might be so. But for purposes of the law, it's only the prime minister's advice that is relevant. Yeah, but, but the local standard argument, as I understand you, is that, if I may summarize, the party as represented in parliament has sufficient interest and connection to the proceedings. So therefore, the consultation that the party must have gotten from the, the prime minister must be a consultation at parliamentary level, at parliamentary level. Is that a fair summary of your... Thank you. Thank you. And the second summary is... No, it cannot be a second summary. <laughs> I haven't summarized. I'm the one who summarizes it. Yes. Uh, and the second submission then would be... Yes. There are interest that arises out of the coalition arrangement. And they are before this court to, 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 to confess and seek protection of such a... But but th that co they have a good case or not, no 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 I'm not there I'm not there yet but I'm saying the coalition agreement that's why I'm saying you should actually address me further because isn't that a contract between the four parties? It's not a contract between this, the prime minister and the the king or cabinet. Because the Constitution recognizes cabinet and the prime minister as far as advice is concerned. Where? That it allows application of conventions in the common law. No, but it's not a convention. A coalition agreement is neither a convention nor a, nor a treaty nor a common law. It, it, that's a contract between four parties. And if there's a remedy, as I understand it, you are saying there was a breach of the coalition agreement, isn't it? In other words, there was a breach of a contract between four parties, isn't it? It's not a constitutional matter, isn't it? That's a party. That's that's a matter of contract of parties. And your remedy, if that contract is breached, is to pull out of their coalition to say, well, that is a political th that's a problem now when you project or transpose an, such an agreement in these proceedings, because we are only concerned with the provisions of the constitutions where they breached. Lord, can, I, can, I, can, can I finish there? Yes, please, so please. And I want to submit to my Lord that I hold a totally different view regarding the issue of no, but your views are not relevant before before me. Yeah. I'm not I'm only interested in your submission, not your opinions. You should argue the make submissions and tell me why you say that coalition agreement is cognizable in these proceedings for purposes of prorogation. Where is it pleaded? Before you leave it, where, 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 where is it pleaded in the papers? I want to do justice to that argument. Where, 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 where do I find it on record? The justiciability of the coalition agreement. Where is it pleaded? Because the issue would be whether this court has jurisdiction to deal with such a, a complaint sitting as a constitutional court. If parties breach their own contract, can you come a constitutional court and force breach of, breach of the contract or observance of the contract? 
assuming, assuming there is such, and you have pleaded it, would this court have jurisdiction in terms of the constitution to deal with that, with the breach of that agreement? Okay. You are now moving to the merits. I want to move to the merits. Okay. And, um, the issue of non render, Mr. Mm -hmm. Non render. Hello? Non render. The issue of non render? Yes, yes. Uh, the issue of non render appears in my case. And, and, and perhaps If, the, if, if, if that is the case, Mr. Ndebele, which is an issue that perhaps I was going to raise, the propriety of uh, suing His Majesty. The propriety of citing him as a party. When you cite, you are suing him, isn't it? Yes. So there's no distinction. You cannot cite someone you are not suing. Because my reading of the papers are clearly that His Majesty didn't do anything wrong, legally wrong. And, and, unless perhaps I didn't quite understand the papers. It is the Prime Minister who actually went on some, some project of advising His Majesty. But I'm saying His Majesty as a sovereign, not as the as the crown now, as the sovereign, never did anything wrong. And and if 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 it is government which is being sued, the attorney general would similarly re fully represent those interests, isn't it? That is wrong. So the propriety then of of, of join, suing his majesty here. Well, when in fact no 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 remedy is sought against what 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 is three? Prayer, in fact, prayer three, prayer, prayer four. This Majesty the King and Head of State passed the dismissal of the Prime Minister. Passed. Passed the dismissal. That's that's the American prayer prayer four. Cost. Cost for the dismissal of the Prime Minister and the new Prime Minister. And the purposes of my reverence to this prayer for... Is there any other prayer against them, His Majesty? No. There's no other prayer. No. So we, are, we should understand it to be that the only reason why His Majesty is being sued before his courts is, is for this court to order him a mandamus. Can we, can we do that? 
Yeah, don't forget that because I think it's very, very critical whether or not we can order His Majesty to do something. And in the event that His Majesty doesn't comply, you are going to say that you are citing His Majesty for contempt. That's a sovereign. Because as an executive, the AG will represent him, isn't it? But you'll address that in due course, of course. Yes. But for purposes of uh, for purposes of uh, yes. it's actually unnecessary to join the speaker of power. Yes. Yes. So that, that would be our submission insofar as the issue of non gender is concerned. I will go straight to the issue now and address the issue of dismissal of the Prime Minister. Is that, but, is that order tenable, Mr. Intendant? Is that is an, is an order that His Majesty dismissed the Prime Minister Telemu? It is my lord. Couldn't that be an, an unlawful order to make? I do not find anything that ought to dishonor the court from making such an order. Let's put it this way. Personally, Where is that authorized in the Constitution? Can, can, you, can you point to a clause in the Constitution? Which says the the, the 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 king can be ordered to, Yeah, that's that's why my brother was asking: Is it legally tenable? It is legally tenable because it's mandamus. No, 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 Mr. This court, this court has authority. Order That's why I ask, can we order the king? Can we issue mandamus against the crown? I Remember, mandamus is a remedy that, that is actually uh, available to force a public official to perform a statutory function, not the sovereign. We are a constitutional monarchy, isn't it? Yeah. And his majesty is obliged to act in accordance with the advice. So if you say we should order him to, to, to dismiss, why don't we say, I, I would have thought someone should advise. Not for the court to order. How can a court issue an order? Remember, we are His Majesty's court. Mr. Ndeva, put differently, uh, in the Constitution, there's a provision that, uh, that places a duty on His Majesty to dismiss the Prime Minister, such that we such that we can sit here and order him to, to perform that duty. It is time, my Lord, when I was about to make submissions in that. Yes, show us the section of the Constitution which places a duty on His Majesty to dismiss the Prime Minister. Uh, 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 Mr. Mm. My Lord, the, the source of the authority of His Majesty to dismiss the Prime Minister uh, appears in section, in fact, let me say, it appears in the Constitution 1. Two, it is part of his uh, reserved powers, which are under common law and convention. No, no, Mr. Ndebele. Sure, the provision of the Constitution. The Constitution. We, are, we are not dealing with prerogatives here, Mr. Ndebele. Remember that in England, the, the reason why they do, the, the prerogatives are there is because they don't have a codified Constitution. We have a codified Constitution. All powers has to be sourced from the Constitution. constitution. If it's a constitutional power, we have to find it somewhere in the Constitution. Not everything, He has reserved powers which are not part of the Constitution. Where are they in the Constitution? Where does the Constitution say these are the reserved powers which include dismissal of a Prime Minister? They, they are, my Lord, found under common law. No, I'm not talking about the common law. We are saying in the Constitution. Or are you conceding that they are not there in the Constitution? Yeah. That? Okay. 
so, so how then can we talk about mandamus then if there's no statutory um, uh, in, an injunction to dismiss the crimes? Can, 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 can I make my submissions because I was asked a very important question. No, Matsinda, but you are still making submissions and we are we are we are testing your submissions now. So 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 don't think that we are we, you can make submissions and and the court cannot test them. Because we have to understand your, your, your remedy. You are saying the, prime, the king, we should order the king to dismiss the prime minister. And I would have thought you'd go further to say precisely because he's, he appointed him. But that's not where you are saying. You say, no, let's look at the common law. I'm going to submit them to the Yes. I'm going to show the court that the Prime Minister could be dismissed under the Constitution. According to his section? Yes, he could be dismissed. According to his section? I'm going to refer to those sections. Number two, I'm going to show you that he has reserved powers. And one of those powers is to dismiss the Prime Minister. And I'm going to show the court as to when those powers are exercisable and could be triggered. Do you have an authority for that proposition? What's the, what's the authority for the proposition that the Prime Minister has reserved powers? Apart from the, he has reserved powers to dismiss. Can you give us an authority from any jurisdiction? We shall avail a copy of this book. Yeah, give us the book. What's the title of the book, Missing Debel? And the page. Just a the, the name of the book is The Veiled, the Veiled Scepter, Reserved Powers of a Head of State in Westminster Systems. Who's the author? Anatomy. Professor Anatomy. Yes. And uh, the professor of Cambridge University. Yes. yes. I'll come, I'll come to, to that when I address it. No, but what does he say, Mr. Ndebel? Because you keep on saying you'll come to this, you'll come to this. I think it's even convenient for you to say, now that I'm addressing this issue, I'm putting this authority before the court for it to consider in support of my proposition. My brother asked you. The first thing I'm going to do, I said I'm going to refer to the prosecution. Number two, I'm going to refer to the authorities that say he has observed powers. Now, when I'm about, if I was about now to refer to the Constitution, then after that, I'm going to refer you to the pages in this book and read what it says. Okay. That's the purposes. In terms of section... Just a level of that, before you move on, I just need to find out whether this is covered under your heads or you're responding to his luxurious question. This, this particular issue is not covered under my head. Okay. Yes. Because, uh, which which section? Not to address it. In terms of section 87.5, and the Prime 